Because you know what? When we study, Brother Tim, we want people to listen. Not because of man teaching or preaching, Pastor. Not because of what we say. It's because of what God's Word is telling them and rewarding them from. Listen to what it says here in 2 Timothy 2 and 18. Who concerning the what? Truth and error. Saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Hymenaeus and Philetus. These were wolves in sheep's clothing. They were coming in and they were undermining the work that Brother Paul and Timothy were doing in the church. <coughs> they were saying, hey, the resurrection's already gone. What are you waiting on? Yeah. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, yes. But not the resurrection of Christians. Not the resurrection of the saints. Amen. We are going to be resurrected one day. Wow. We're going to have a glorified body. They were wanting to put holes in the Christian flagship, the cornerstone, that corner which the builders rejected. Jesus Christ resurrected on the third day. But our resurrection one day, no matter what's going to happen to you, it's going to take place at the rapture of the church. What does the Bible say? The what in Christ shall rise first? The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive in what church? Remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever meet what? The Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the scripture and that's the doctrine that Paul preached. But we find these people that come in. And like I said, they are wolves in sheep's clothing. Have you ever met anyone like that? Has anyone ever come in pastor in this church? And try to undermine the authority of God. They've tried. They've tried and you've had to sit them down. Amen. Nothing wrong with being sit down if you're wrong. That's right. That's right. Tell you what, we need more people with backbones to be able to sit these people down. Because they're going to try, they're going to try, they're going to try their very best until Jesus calls the church, until Jesus comes back for His bride. Amen. We've got to be worried of what tonight? False doctrine. False doctrine. These two characters, they had false doctrine. Amen. Timothy was troubled. He was a young pastor. But Brother Paul, he was always there to help him out. Through his Amen. epistles, he guided young Timothy and told him, listen, stand. Stand on the truth. Stand above all on the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Use that cornerstone to build your faith. Use that cornerstone to build the church. And that's what Northside Baptist Church is built upon. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. You and I, one day, we will be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, Brother Paul writes. Right. But that day has not yet come. Well, how do you know? Because I'm still here. Amen. And I've got faith. Amen. Amen. That's good. I have faith. Amen. I know it's not taking place yet. Amen. Sometimes when... When, uh, when sometimes I go through the house and hell will be somewhere and I think the rapture's already taking place. I'm like, what, what, oh, man, I'm in hell right now. <laughs> I'm, I just pick with her about it. I say, Lord, I thought the rapture took place. Honey, I couldn't find you. She's in some back room somewhere. Now I'm going along with the kid with her. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I remember almost 20 years ago that I knelt on an old fashioned altar in the north and Brother Tim, I got saved. Amen. Amen. So I know, I know my redeemer. And I know one day there's going to be a meeting in the air. And I want to be part of that. Let's turn over to Titus. Titus chapter 3 and verse 9. Titus, another young pastor, first bishop of Crete. He also helped Paul reconcile the church of Corinth. This epistle, some people put it around 66 AD. Titus 3 and 9. Considered the one of the pastoral epistles. First bishop of Crete. Titus, he had problems as well, didn't he? Brother Paul's writing his epistle here around 66 AD. And remember, he traveled with Paul and helped reconcile the church of Corinth. Corinth had a lot of problems. The, each of these churches that we find in the Pauline epistles, they, they each had problems, Brother Tim. They each were going through battles, spiritual battles. People were coming in, trying to undermine what Paul was setting up in the early church. Are you at your place? Amen. Titus 3. Verse 9. But avoid what, church? Foolish. Foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law. For they are what? Unprofitable and vain. 
made void, vain, vanity of no circumstance. A foolish person says in their heart there is no God. Right. There are people that will put forth foolish questions yeah. to you. They would rather argue some other point than argue the finer points of Christianity. If you try to say to some people, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, we're all sinners. They will rather ask you instead of a question about being a sinner, they will ask you a question about marriage. They will get you off the subject. Right. The important stuff, they'll just start asking questions here and there about different types of doctrines. But the main thing you and I need to know as Christians, we have to let people know Jesus Christ Are you and save them from their yeah. sin. Amen. It's not for me to school the sinner out there, Brother Tim. It's for me to get the sinner to come into church Amen. and let our pastor preach the gospel. There you go. And let our Sunday school teachers teach what needs to be Amen. taught. You can't make a mule do anything when it gets hard-headed. That's right. You can't make a mule do anything. You know that? Yeah. They are the hardest head things that God ever created. Besides one. But now, Preach. I'm just going on with but now listen, when a mule takes his mind, we want something to drink, it'll drink it. You can't. We can't make it do anything. You can't even make it drink water. You can't make it do anything. Amen. And that's how sinners are. They're contentious. They want to fight you on every point. And what I want to teach my young class is this. When you go out and you testify and you witness, you let them know that all have come short of the glory of God. Right. All are sinners. Amen. Amen. On, That's the most important thing to realize. On, and that God commended His love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. That's important. You bring them to the bleeding side of Calvary. You let them realize that they're going to a place called hell. And yeah. there is no escape. Yeah. You bring them to a place the where they have to get on that knee. They have to bow down before an almighty righteous God and say, Lord, save me on the sin. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Avoid foolish questions yeah. and genealogies tracing back your roots. Genealogy. That's it. Tracing your roots back. I've done it. I traced it. I've traced it and I've traced it. It's fascinating. But it never saved me. Right. It never saved me that I found out that I was an English mutt. <laughs> the thing that saved me was Jesus Christ, Brother Bill. Man. What he did on Calvary. And not only that, the blood was the atonement for sin, but he resurrected on the third day. And he got it. Victory over death, hell, and the grave. That's worth rejoicing. People will, they'll study and they'll come up with questions that doesn't have anything to do with the real important matters. Right. And what is important is salvation, folks. Amen. And contentions and strivings about the law. Well, I tell you what, Brother Tim Smith, they wanted to bring the law into this, didn't they? When they were establishing the early church, well, I tell you what, they were interweaving it with the law. And we found out an important word the pastor brought up. Very important word is grace, unmerited favor. Grace is unmerited favor. By the law, you had to work for it. You had to work for it. Amen. And it was the blood, not the propitiation of Jesus Christ, the final sacrifice, but the blood of animals yeah. that cleansed that sin once annually. The atonement of that sin. But every year, that you had to go back. You had to go back. Take that turtle dove, that bullock. That blood was shed for those sins. The thank God and propitiation, the final sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He died once and for all. Listen, these people that say, I've been saved 30 times, as the pastor says, how many times has Jesus Christ had to come out of glory and hang on a cross? One time. One time only. Oh, man, a lot. I remember one time we met some old classmates and we was talking about church and having a great time. And, and they said, well, uh, you know, I want you to pray for my husband. He's lost again. <laughs> and I said, lost again? Yeah, he couldn't stop smoking cigarettes. And I said, so cigarettes is going to send him to hell. Well, that's what the preacher's preaching. And I'm thinking, young man, you need to get someone. Yeah. You need to get... Right. We're preaching the truth. That's right. Amen. Jesus Christ ain't coming out of glory to hang on that cross just because your husband smoked cigarettes. 
I want to tell you cigarettes ain't going to send nobody to hell. It's not accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Right. Amen. 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 That's good. It's not anything but rejecting Jesus Christ that sends us to hell, Sister Bonnie. People need to hear the truth. That's false doctrine, Brother Tim. That's false doctrine, and that's here in our backyard. And it's going on all the time, and people are going out into right. eternity, and they're going straight to hell. And do you even care about it? Do you even care about it? Bless do you me. care that people are going to hell? Yeah, amen. Do you care? Yes. yes. Thank you. We should all care. We should all say, yes, we care. But what can I do, Brother Lance? What can I do? We already told you, praying, but we already told you, you can hand out tracts. Right. Get your handful of tracts. It's still as many tracts back there as the last time that I preached about them tracts. <laughs> Until they're gone, we're going to keep preaching about Amen. them. That's good. All right? Wow. Brother, you're going to get hung up on gospel tracts. Well, I'll tell you what. Listen, here's the thing. We know that people are going to hell every day. How do you know well, the Bible says that hell enlarges what? Amen. Exactly. It's getting bigger. It's getting bigger for a reason, ain't it? Amen. They're getting ready to have a party down there? No. Amen. It's getting re it's getting bigger for a reason. Because people are dropping off in the hell Amen. every day. Right. When Amen. people drop off in the hell every day, that means that it's got to get bigger. Amen. The reason I'd emphasize anything like them tracks is some people are timid. Some people are older and they can't go door to door and not like us younger people. You can lay a gospel track in a bathroom. Right. You can lay it at the gas pump. You can even, I've heard of people even putting it in their light bill. Putting it in their insurance bill and sending it off. And when they get that bill, oh, they're going to open that. They're going to open up that letter because it's got money in it. They're going to open it up. Woo, we got that money. Got that mammon. They like that mammon, don't they? And when they open it up, they see that gospel track. And who knows, that thing that you did, that little seed that you sowed, could lead someone to Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Take the initiative. Don't wait on brother or sister or the preacher or the elders or the teachers to do it. You take the initiative. Amen. You'll be a soldier for the cross. You'll do something for Jesus. He died for you. you do something for Him. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bible over to Hebrews 13 and 9. Hebrews 13 and 9. Some theologians argue that it was Barnabas or Paul that wrote Hebrews. We may never know. It likens unto the way Paul wrote his epistles, but also I've never seen any other writings of Barnabas. So we can't really compare, Brother Tim. But you know what? There's that foolish questioning. If we get caught up and argue over who wrote Hebrews, right. we're missing the point, Brother Tim, aren't we? The point, exactly right. The point is Jesus Christ is presented. To the Hebrews. Are you there? Bless you. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 9. Be not what church carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the what? Heart, Heart be established with there's the word. Unmerited favor. What is it? G-A-C-E. G-R-A-C-E. Grace. Not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Carry is from the Greek word peripherio, and it means in doubt and hesitation to be led away, now to disappear. Some people are led away by different opinions about yeah. who Jesus was. Now listen, Jesus wasn't just a teacher. Jesus wasn't just a good man. Jesus was the Son of God. Amen. Jesus wasn't just the prophet. He was Emmanuel, Amen. God among Amen. us. Amen. We need to settle this. We need to settle it. We need to settle it. We don't need to argue about it. We need to say, God, help me settle it. If you are in doubt of anything that's being preached behind this pulpit, you need to say, God, help me settle it. Help me settle it. Amen. You know what? One of the things is people don't want to listen anymore. That's right. They, they get out there and they, they, they chew their bubble gum and they talk and they don't want to listen to the Scripture. And then what, what happens is they miss it. And they miss it time and time again. And then they act like, man, I've never heard that before. That's new doctrine. It's been preached for years. 
Amen. Why don't we just listen sometimes? Amen. Amen. Why don't we come to church and shut up and sit down and open our ears and listen? Because we're too busy. Preoccupied with the things of the world. Amen. I promise you, listen. You listen to that message on Sunday morning. The Methodists ain't going to strip us out. The bar promised there'll be some left. I'm just kidding, sister. 